Disclaimer, the video you are about to see has content that contains swearing, substance referencing, violence, and or partial on-screen nudity. If you are a person under 13 years of age, do not watch this video by order of COPPA. In general, if you are over 13 but are sensitive, you may exit this video and find a nice wholesome video to watch. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey there guys, Jordan here, back with another reaction video, and it's going to be another episode of Elements of Justice. And this episode is Crusading for a Turnabout, Case 2, Episode 7, Trial. So here we are at the second day of the second trial, and in the last trial, Sweetie Belle is going to be the defendant. And after a, uh, and Athena was a bit nervous about it, that is until Luna appeared in her dreams and reassured her that she'll be able to help her. And now we're on, and now we're at the trial, so let's see how it goes from this point. And with that said, let us begin. February 15th, 10.45 a.m. Ponyville District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 5. You say what? Ponies can walk in dreams now? Holly, at some point you're going to have to accept that this is how this world works. Yeah. Easy for you to say. Never mind that part. Athena, you're saying that Luna also wants what we want. To ensure Sweetie Belle gets a non-guilty verdict. She sure did. Yeah. And that she thinks the true culprit is either Fair Devotion or Sugar Stamp. Possibly both of them. There's certainly strong evidence to suggest at least one was directly involved. But what do you think, Athena? That's what true. Do I think? Yesterday, I was still a bit uncertain. But after having that dream, I think I have a better idea. Nothing definitive, boss. But I think that this trial will lead us to the answers we need. Still, if Princess Luna believes Sugar Stamp or Fair Devotion are guilty, the defendant being Sweetie Belle puts her in a rather difficult situation. It sure does. It sounds like she'll be relying on us once again to reveal Sweetie Belle's innocence, like she did with Turning Page and Scootaloo. Yeah. Well, exactly how she plans on doing that, we don't know. It's probably best not to dwell on that for now. If last night's dream taught me anything, it's that we are on the same side. That's not all, though. After last night, something that Luna and Twilight said to each other at the start of yesterday's trial makes a lot more sense. Ah! Twilight Sparkle! I heard that you would be assisting the defense today. Heard? I think it's more likely that you found out during your nightly stroll. Am I right? Ah. Is that why Twilight was up late the night before? Did Luna speak to her like, like with me? What for? And if so, why did Twilight feel the need to hide it? That's Not a good mention, question. Why would I have detected so much discord over such a small lie? Ah, forget it. I need to concentrate on this case, not this. I can tell you're a bit calmer today than you were yesterday. Here's hoping you could take that composure with you into the trial. <laughs> I hope so too, boss. But actually... Hey, Twilight. Hmm? What is it, Athena? We've been through a lot, haven't we? Yes. And I've hurt you before because of a lot of my recent actions and... Oh, that. I... Athena, you don't have to apologize again. I already told you. I understand, right? It, yeah, but I wasn't going to apologize again. I, I mean, not that I don't still feel ashamed of what I did, but... After I accused the car in the first half of yesterday's trial, you told me that even though I'd opened up some very old wounds, you'd stand with me in court. I really appreciated that. I didn't get a chance to tell you before, but after we heard yesterday what Mr. Wright did to get disbarred, and how he felt during that trial. 
Oh, yeah. I realized that doing everything on my own or thinking I had to, that was what messed things up. I was wrong. But now I'm prepared to make up for it. And I wanted to, I guess, share the same sentiment you shared with me that day. Athena? You said you'd stand with me in court no matter what. Well, I want to promise that I'll stand with you in court too. Come hell or high water, we'll face it together. That is, if you'll still stand with me today. Do you even have to ask? There you well, go. It would be nice to know. Of course I'll stand with you, Athena. You're my friend, after all. And this time, I'm confident that we'll uncover the truth. Together. Together. Hey, here comes Sweetie Belle. Good morning, every pony. How are you? Where hey, Sweetie Belle. Right? How are you, Sweetie Belle? Me? I guess I'm doing all right, too. You are? Are you sure? Yeah? Why? Uh... It's just... Well... I think we just expected you to be more... Nervous. Yeah. Uh -huh. Oh! I mean... I am nervous, but not all that much. I know really? and Twilight are going to do their best to defend me. And considering how they managed to get both Scootaloo and Turning Page declared innocent, well, then I shouldn't have a whole lot to worry about. Whatever happens, happens, you know? That's a mature outlook. Thanks! You say that, Sweetie Belle? And your heart's saying you believe that too. So maybe you aren't actually nervous. But something tells me that's not because you trust Twilight in me. Pardon me, everybody. Oh. Private Eye, what what are you doing here? Hmm. Did Miss Sykes not tell you? Huh? No. Strange. Well, I was tasked with coming here to help her with something. What? Help with something? Private Eye, do you have what I asked for? What you asked for? I do. Though I must confess, I'm not sure why you needed it. Nevertheless... Here it is. Is that blood? What? A sample of Royal Order's blood, to be more specific. Great. And just to confirm, you were able to obtain this secretly, correct? Yes. But why was such secrecy necessary, Miss Sykes? He'll find out later, Detective. Thank you for this. I see. Very well, then. I'm sure that you'll be able to put this to good use in today's trial. Royal Order's blood sample add to the court record. Yeah, I hope so, Private Eye. I know so, Miss Sykes. Critical thinking is the key to success, after all. Just keep that in mind, and I believe you'll have nothing to worry about. I will. And I'll do my best to see through everything today, Detective. Of course. Now, I had best return to my duties. Take care. I guess I'd better head in too, right? Yes, that would be for the best. You go on in, Sweetie Belle. We'll meet you inside shortly. Okay, see you guys soon! Okay. Okay. I know you guys have some questions. When did you ask Private Eye to get you that sample? It couldn't have been this morning. Well, I didn't ask him. Sonata did. Huh? Sonata? After Luna visited me in my dream, I couldn't fall asleep afterwards. I had this feeling that I needed to follow up on a few things. But I obviously couldn't do it on my own. So I decided to leave the castle for a bit and go to Sonata for help. She was happy to assist. That's when I asked her to get Private Eye to obtain this blood sample. That wasn't all, though. Apollo, do you remember that photo you shared with us yesterday? The one with the blood on the trees? Yes. Yeah. Did you ask Sonata for help with that then? Yep. I asked if she could find out whose blood that was. Chances are, it's the victim's. But it doesn't hurt to check. And there were two other things I needed her to look into. 
few more things? What? The source of the anonymous tip and the location of the remaining suit of armor. The one belonging to the victim that died at the statue. Sonata should be out investigating those things right now. Hopefully, she'll be able to get back to us with her findings soon. Excellent work, Athena! I'm glad you're keeping on top of things. <laughs> ah, boss. Thanks. But why did you ask her to do all of that? It... It has to do with something I thought of yesterday, after I had my dream. It's nothing definitive, to be honest. And I might be way off the mark here, but... I have a hunch that this blood sample, along with finding out those two things, will be crucial. Not just for landing a not guilty verdict for Sweetie Belle, but also for figuring out the truth behind this whole messy case. Okay. I see. I know, Twilight. I wish I could tell you something more definitive, but it's going to depend on how the trial goes from here on. I know I'm asking a lot, but can you trust me on this? Well? Yes. I can, Athena. If you say you think this will help, then I think so too. Great. Thank you, Twilight. If I may have your attention, the trial is about to begin. Counsel for the defense, please enter the courtroom at this time. That's as good a sign as any, I suppose. Let's get going, Twilight. Yep, let's. Good luck, you two. Not that you'll need it, I'm sure. Together, you're sure to succeed. It's all or nothing now. February 15th, 11 o'clock a.m. Ponyville District Court. Courtroom number five. Say that again. Nevertheless, I will reiterate my position as a neutral judge presiding over this trial. Prosecutor Luna, you may begin with your opening statement, if you would please. Of course, Your Honor. I would like to first begin by recontextualizing the entire case. Yesterday's trial, thanks in large part to the efforts of the defense, revealed several key facts. One was that on the night of Royal Order's murder, there was not just one victim, but in fact, two. The original Royal Order and his clone. The defense postulated that one of them was killed at a clearing in the middle of the Everfree Forest and was subsequently brought to the bridge. The second one was killed at the Nightmare Moon statue before being eaten by Timberwolves. This trial will provide us insight to the truth behind that second death. The blood test that Miss Sonata and Detective Private I submitted yesterday proved the statue area bore two ponies' blood. One was royal order, but the other was the accused, Miss Sweetie Belle. The prosecution believes she was involved in the second royal order's death. Her blood found at the scene confirms this. Oh, man. It doesn't confirm she actually killed him, though. Only that she was there at the scene when he died. That's what we learned at the detention center. Where is Luna going with this? If this was all she had, surely she wouldn't call for this trial if she believed Sweetie was innocent. What's forcing her hoof? I see. Prosecutor Luna, do you mean to tell the court that you believe the defendant, Miss Sweetie Belle, murdered Royal Order? Not quite, Your Honor. Huh? 
Not quite! What do you mean? To explain that, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to have Private Eye briefly come to the stand. Private Eye? Why does she need him? Very well. The court grants this request. Detective Eye, please explain to the court how Royal Order was killed at the statue. At once, Your Highness. While there are still some facts left shrouded in mystery, our current theory attempts to explain the events of that night at that particular scene. The victim and defendant were at the statue. Some sort of altercation must have occurred, after which Miss Sweetie Belle was forced to act. Forced to act? What? We believe that Royal Order attempted to attack Miss Sweetie Belle. However, she must have done something in response, which would have led to how he died. Impalement at the statue's base. Statue diagram added to the court record. Do you mean to say that the defendant pushed the victim herself? What? Not at all, my lord. Miss Sweetie Belle is a film, and much smaller than the victim. She would not have been able to push him on her own. Then, how do you propose he ended up in pale? We believe it was because the victim was suffering from weak knees due to the effect of poison choke. When Royal Order attacked Miss Sweetie Belle, she must have instinctively dove for his hooves in an attempt to trip him. He would have naturally stumbled forward, resulting in impalement. Oh. Order, it is this theory that the prosecution will pursue in today's trial. As Detective I has now revealed, while Miss Sweetie Belle was indeed involved in Royal Order's death, we do not believe she intentionally murdered him. Rather, we believe this to be a tragic case of an accidental killing. She did intentionally trip him, but she did not mean to impale him. Uh, uh, oh man, that's not good. Jackson! Prosecutor Luna! How can you make that kind of claim? That is conjecture at best. Miss Sykes, are you saying you do not believe Miss Sweetie Belle was responsible? Of course we are. The defense argues Sweetie Belle wasn't involved in Royal Order's death in the slightest. Great, right, Sweetie Belle. Uh. What? Sweetie Belle? Sweetie Belle, come on. Tell the court your side of the story. Sweetie? Sweetie Belle? Why aren't you answering? I believe I can explain that, Princess Twilight. What? See, ever since yesterday evening, Miss Sweetie Belle has decided to exercise her right to remain silent. Her right? Huh? You mean, she's acknowledging that- No, I won't accept that! It's not true! I know it isn't! As resolved as you are, you will need more than mere protest, Golden Pixie. Oh... oh boy. I totally missed hearing that. So, silence again, huh? Is this another thing Luna set up? Or maybe someone else? The defense does bring up a fair point, Prosecutor Luna. Though it is an intriguing theory, it is still just that. A theory. Right. I'm aware of that, Your Honor. That is why, in order to substantiate this theory, the prosecution would now like to call two witnesses to the stand. Witnesses who claim to have seen this unfortunate accident occur right before their very eyes. T two witnesses? Again? Uh... <sighs> We've just started, but already I've been blindsided. Ugh. Don't let it get to you, Athena. Right. Huh? Remember what you said earlier. Princess Luna is on our side. She did say that. In this particular accusation, it's because she expects us to be able to show it doesn't hold up to scrutiny. That means we just have to steady ourselves and keep pressing on. Uh, right. Very well then. Detective, you may leave the stand. The court will now hear from the prosecution's two witnesses. Witnesses? State your names and occupations for the court record. Sugar Snoop! 
at your service, your highness. I'm a mail pony working for the Crown Courier Express. Wait, she's a mail pony? No, she's not. Oh, your honor. She's like a mail carrier. Yes. Letters. Oh, uh, right. Oh, boy. <clears throat> and your name, witness? I'm Fair Devotion. I'm a substitute teacher at Ponyville Elementary. And, as I understand it, the deceased's wife? Yes, that is correct. My condolences, Miss Fair Devotion. I understand that this is a trying time for you. It must be. You'd think she'd express more visible sorrow at that. That her voice is crying out in English. That's unmistakable. Just like I thought. Witnesses, are you prepared to testify as to what the both of you saw that night? Uh... Yes, we are. we are. Very well. Please begin your testimony. Witness testimony. What we both saw. That night, I happened to be watching the scene from above. The sound of fighting drew me in. I was searching for my husband when I also heard something that sounded like fighting and went to investigate. What I saw, oh, it was horrible. <sighs> that little filly had tripped royal order and when he landed, the statue basin pinched him. She ran off in a panic afterwards. If only I'd gone after him sooner, instead of waiting behind like he'd asked me to, then I could have stopped this from happening. Wow. So you two saw the grisly scene unfold before your very eyes? Yes, I can still see him lying there. Lifeless. I'm sorry, Your Honor. I'd rather not think much about it. I can't believe it either. Royal Order seems so full of life. I never thought I'd have to live on without him. In any case, I believe now is the time for the defense to begin their cross-examination. Miss Sykes, you may proceed. <laughs> you got it, Your Honor. I wasn't expecting things to go exactly like this. But now they're both here. Time to tear down this line and see what they're really hiding. Cross-examination. All right, here we go. That night, I happened to be watching the scene from above. The sound of fighting drew me in. <sighs> Where exactly were you both watching from? Well, I was in the treetop. First for something else, and I heard the commotion as I was flying towards Ponyville. As for myself, I was standing out of the way, somewhere in the woods where I could watch what happened unseen. Miss Devotion, where were you before you arrived at the statue area? The crossroads. I'd gone searching for my husband, and so naturally I followed the path from the entrance. I noticed a blood trail leading down the path towards the statue when I got to the crossroads. I followed it. Give or take. Oh, it was uh, corrupted. Yeah. Same for me, I think. Could you describe what you did next? I was searching for my husband when I also heard something that sounded like fighting and went to investigate. <gasps> did either of you know that the other was in the woods at the same time? No, not in the slightest. I wasn't aware Sugar Stamp had been nearby until later when I went to give my statement to the police. I didn't see Diva at all that night either. Miss Devotion, why were you drawn to the sands of fighting in the first place? Weren't you concerned about getting hurt? Uh. My husband was a member of the Royal Guard. He'd gone into the woods alone, knowing that it was filled with dangerous creatures. The chances of him running into one of those things and having to fight it were high. 
And from what I heard of that scuffle, one of the ponies involved was most definitely royal order. Not to mention I had already found blood. I believe now you can see why I was more concerned with that than my own safety. Yeah, okay. It wouldn't surprise me to know that even from a distance, Fair could detect her husband's voice. Continue with your testimony, witnesses. What I saw, oh, it was horrible. That little filly had tripped royal order, and when he landed, the statue base impaled him. She ran off in a panic afterwards. <sighs> So you're saying that it was because of Sweetie Belle tripping him that royal order was impaled? Yes! As terrific as it is to admit, that's exactly what I saw. So that explains how he was impaled. But what about where? Wh where? If you were there and saw the exact moment the impalement occurred, you should be able to tell us where the victim was impaled. I, I um, how strange. I, I don't really remember. Was it through his body? Or... Huh? Hang on! Fair devotion? Hmm? What is it, Miss Sykes? It looked like something occurred to you just now. After Sugar Stamp said she couldn't remember where Royal Order was impaled. Did you have something to add? Something like that. I remembered how my husband fell. How your husband fell? Could you explain? From what I recall, he fell face first into the base of the statue. Sheesh. Th th that's right! That's what I saw too! And that means... Royal Order was impaled directly through his jaw. My god. That certainly god. matches up with what Private Eye laid out earlier. Yeah, it does. Rather cleanly, I might add. But what Fair just did... Not seeing where he was impaled, but letting Sugar Stamp point it out? It's exactly what Luna was doing with me in the last trial! She's leading her! Which means... Witness, please continue your testimony. If only I'd gone after him sooner, instead of waiting behind like he'd asked me to, then I could have stopped this from happening. <laughs> Fair devotion? I want to clarify something. The reason you went into the woods was to chase after your husband after he'd gone to look for your son? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. Here's where it all begins to make sense. If what I'm thinking is true, the discord in their voices will tell me everything I need to know. Really. Somehow, I find it hard to believe that was the only reason. What? What are you talking about? I am also curious, Defense. Surely you don't think the witness is lying about wanting to go after her husband. Perhaps lying is putting it too strongly. But I have reason to believe that Fair Devotion went into the woods for a reason beyond what she's told the court. And it has to do with this piece of evidence. <sighs> That's huh? a travel case, isn't it? Yes. This travel case belonged to Royal Order, Your Honor. He'd take it with him when he had to make trips to Canterlot, which was quite frequently. But it's not the case itself that the court should be interested in. It's what we found inside. And um, what did you find inside? There are two items of note. The first is this planner. It belonged to Royal Order and details his movements up until the day he died. The second is this. A love letter to Royal Order, written not by his wife, Fair Devotion, but by another pony, Sugar Stamp. Oh, yeah. Sugar Stamp? What? Order! Order in the court! Miss Sykes, are you implying that the victim, Royal Order, was having an illicit affair with one of these witnesses? I don't need to imply anything, Your Honor. It states so in the letter. Uh, yes, I... I can't see that. Sugar Stamp, is this true? Did you write this letter? Diva? I can't believe it! After all I've done for you! You 
turn around and stab me in the back like this? I loved my husband. Loved? As if. You were never happy with him being a royal guard. You hated how he was always working, always leaving you home alone. That was because I thought he was spending all of his time working, not being with you. Well, what can I say? He loved me, and I loved him. The heart wants what it wants. If she keeps saying things like that, Miss Devotion is going to tear hers out. Jeez. Is something up, Athena? Hmm? Maybe. Twilight, do the two of them sound a little off to you? Off? How so? Hmm. Not really. I mean, I'd expected them to be surprised. Especially since Fair outright denied the possibility of an affair yesterday, and Sugar probably didn't think Royal would be holding on to that letter. Why do you ask? Did you notice something? I think so. Interesting. They act surprised and angry, but I'm not hearing any actual shock or rage in their voices. If that's true, then I'm almost certain I know the reason why. Not to mention... Witnesses! You will calm yourselves or be escorted from the courtroom! <laughs> Prosecutor Luna, what are your thoughts regarding this unexpected development? It's hardly unexpected, Your Honor. We too had examined the travel case in question and found the letter the defense presented. As such, I am more intrigued than surprised by what this opens up. Uh, what do you mean, Prosecutor Luna? As the defense said, the planner belonged to the victim and details his movements up until he died. I suggest you read the entry for the 12th. On the 12th? Let's see here. Ah, this. Locate Miracle. Perform cloning spell. Oh, my word! The Miracle! That must mean... Your Honor, yesterday we established that there were two versions of the victim on the night of the murder, thanks to that mirror pool. It was initially believed he made two of himself to seek out his son, but with the details of this plan are now on display, another alarming motive emerges. <coughs> Royal Order cloned himself so that young version could stay with his wife, Fair Devotion, and the second could be with his other partner, Sugar Stamp. <coughs> Indeed. Uh, that would appear to be the most logical explanation for this entry. But that's not all that's revealed by this, Your Honor. This all? This affair casts a shadow over some of what we already heard from these two witnesses. Namely, why Fair Devotion followed her husband. As the defense pointed out, Fair could have had an ulterior motive. One involving the context of this affair. And that could change an aspect of this trial. Wouldn't you agree, Miss Sykes? For that is what you are arguing, isn't it? Well? Miss Sykes? Athena? I know what you're trying to hint at, Prosecutor Luna. And I'm sure you mean well. But I'm afraid I can't follow that path. Uh, defense? I believe some confirmation is an order as to your stance. No, Your Honor. I don't believe we need to confirm anything just yet. Or at least, not this. Huh? You don't! What? Instead, I'd like to focus on another aspect of the planner. Another aspect? Your Honor, if you look at the planner, you'll see that there are actually two entries on the 12th. You've already read the first. What does the second one say? The second? Uh, hmm. Meet Sugar Stamp at Everfree Forest Clearing, 10.10 p.m. As you will recall from their testimony, Fair Devotion and Sugar Stamp arrived at the statue around 10.30. This means that the scheduled meeting with Royal Order would have occurred 20 minutes prior. Yes, I can see that, Miss Sykes, but why does that matter? It matters because in that time frame, Sugar Stamp was not watching the scene as she previously testified. 
Instead, she was elsewhere. Namely, <sighs> at the clearing to meet with royal order. <clears throat> oh, you're right. <clears throat> Your Honor, it's important that we account for every witness's movements that night. As such, the defense formally asked to hear further testimony from Sugar Stamp. What? Oh. Golden Pixie, just what are you up to? Sugar Stamp's meeting with Royal Order is irrelevant. Unfortunately, Prosecutor Luna, that is something neither you nor I can decide. Not without hearing her testify once again. <laughs> I know I shouldn't take too much satisfaction in throwing Luna a curveball, but can I help but feel a little smug? More than that, though, I think we will find that what she has to say is relevant, due to what she confessed to us in the detention center yesterday. She confessed? To what? You don't mean... Oh. We can't forget that on the night in question, there were two royal orders and that both of them died. While this initial testimony attempted to shed light on one of those deaths, what Sugar Stamp told us reveals what happened to the other. Namely, that he was killed by Sugar Stamp herself. Oh, right. That's what she confessed, Alcright. Order! Order in the court! Incredible! If this is true, then I can think of no reason not to permit further testimony. Athena, where are you going with this? How is Sugar Stamp's story going to help us defend Sweetie Belle? Trust me, Twilight. This will likely be very important for us to hear. Once we get the full story, I think we'll start seeing this case in a whole new light. Oh, okay, Athena. If you're that certain about this, I'll stand by you. You better be right about this. Miss Sugar Stamp. Y yes, Your Honor? You will now testify to the court as to your actions that night prior to you running into the defendant. Uh, okay. This should be interesting. Witness testimony. Meeting and killing Royal Order. I went to meet Royal Order at the time we agreed on, 10, 10 p.m. We talked for a little bit, and he told me his plan of leaving me with a clone of himself. But when I heard that, I, I couldn't think! I, I killed him, then and there, using a letter opener that I carried with me. After he was dead, I removed his armor, then decided to carry the body to the castle ruins by flying it there. Then I flew out of the forest. While flying over the crossroads, I saw Scootaloo crash into the other royal order. After she left, I moved the scooter and wagon to further shift the blame. And this is what you confessed to yesterday, then? Yes, Your Honor. Every last bit of it. Hmm, I see. Defense, you may begin your cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Time to finally put this confession to bed. Cross-examination. All right, here goes nothing. I went to meet Royal Order at the time we agreed on, 10, 10 p.m. We talked for a little bit, and he told me his plan of leaving me with a clone of himself. <gasps> Did you have any idea what Royal Order wanted to talk to you about before you went to this meeting? A little bit. He told me he had an idea as to how we could be together. But... You didn't know it would involve clones, right? No, of course not! I wasn't even sure that clones could exist! I thought for sure he'd choose the easier option and stay with me! Oh, I was so mad! So you say. Your heart, on the other hand. Before you met up with Royal Order, did you happen to see any pony else in the forest? Well, I did see the children while I was flying from the direction of the castle to the clearing. The children? Oh, you mean Scootaloo and Turning Page? Ah. Yeah, and also those two other fillies, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. They looked like they were talking about something really important. 
Around what time did you see them? 10 p.m. It was just before I had landed at the clearing. She must have seen the blackmail negotiations before they'd gone downhill. Sugar Stamp? Yes, Princess Twilight? After you saw the children, did you see any pony else before you landed at the clearing? No, not until Royal Order arrived. We know already of why she met with him, so questioning it further won't get us anywhere. Witness, continue your testimony. But when I heard that, I... I couldn't think! I... I killed him! Then and there! Using the letter opener that I carried with me. <gasps> How long after you met and talked with Royal Order did you supposedly kill him? I would say... About five minutes after, so around 10.15 p.m. And how did you kill him exactly? Was it just with a single strike? N no First I kicked him in the side to get him off balance. <laughs> kicked him? Uh... While he was fully armored? Yes. I had to really put my back into it just to stagger him. It made an awful, loud, metallic sound. A loud, metallic sound? Like a... Clang? Y yes That's a good word to describe it. I'd give you candy for that answer, but... Oh. I don't have any on me. Okay. It's all right, Miss Stamp. Could you tell us what happened next? Well, I had to act quickly before he could recover. So, I... I stabbed him with the letter opener. Through his right temple. It killed him. Instantly. That lines up with the autopsy report's initial findings, but... How do you explain the other stab wounds found around the same area on his head? The... other stab wounds? The autopsy report states that along with a lethal stab wound to the right temple, several post-mortem stab wounds were found in the same location. Miss Stamp, did you stab the victim again after he was already dead? Yes, I did. Good grief! But why would you do such a thing? Were you really that angry with him? I believe I might know why, Your Honor. Huh? Y you do, Miss Devotion? Indeed. Though it is a bit grisly. Sugar Stamp. Yes, Diva? You testified that you decided to move the body after you killed Royal Order, correct? Yes, that's correct. But secretly moving a body that was bleeding from a head wound would have been difficult. You'd have a trail leaking from him constantly. Oh, that's, that's true. why you need to stab him again. Ah. Uh. Yes, that's right. Uh, can you run that by me again? It's true. I did stab him again after he died, but I only realized he was still bleeding after I got rid of his armor. I had removed the blade to throw it all into the river, you see, and when I came back to the clearing, a pool of blood had collected on the ground. Ooh. So, I tried to stick the letter opener into the first wound like a plug. It was my best bet at stopping the bleeding so I could move the body, and it worked. And that's her way of explaining those irregularities in the victim's wound that Luna mentioned. At any rate, I think we've settled that matter. Let's move on. Witness, describe to the court what you did next. After he was dead, I removed his armor, then decided to carry the body to the castle ruins by flying it there. Then I flew out of the forest. <laughs> So after you stabbed the victim, you decided to toss the armor in the river, then move the body by flying it away. Did you see any pony else while you were flying? Any pony else? Y yes actually. I saw two ponies very clearly. They were actually heading towards each other, though I'm not sure if they knew it. Who were they? The first was Sakura. She was coming from her hut, I remember. And the other was Turning Page. He'd been coming from the castle. And that was it? You only saw those two? 
No pony else? No, no pony else. That lines up with what we've already established. Scootaloo would have already passed by the clearing at this point. So Sugar wouldn't have seen her. Right. In turning, since he was coming from the castle, would have left there long before Sugar Step dropped off Royal Order's body. And as Turning Page said in the previous trial, he was the shadow that Zakora saw on her way to the castle. Sugar Stamp's story confirms that, too. I'm not sensing any contradictions in her words just yet, Athena. So far, her actions make sense. Or at least, can be explained. Yeah. We better move on, then. Before you reach the castle ruins, did you stop off anywhere? No, I didn't. Really? Not even at a certain zebra's hut, in order to deliver a certain letter. L letter? Oh. I believe the defense is referring to this one, witness. <laughs> Obviously, the contents yeah, of the letter that. cannot be revealed to the court, but the envelope in which it was delivered should suffice. I would like to resubmit it to the court record, Your Honor. The court accepts it into evidence. <laughs> Envelope letter updated in the court record. Oh, that letter! It slipped my mind until just now. I'm sorry, everybody. So that means you admit to stopping off at Sakura's at some point in order to drop off this letter? Yes, that's correct. And when did you make that stop then? It was after I placed the body at the ruins. That's also when I removed the letter opener and put it back in my bag. After that, I went to deliver the letter. Hmm. I see. Could you add that to the end of your testimony for me, please? Uh, oh, sure. Let's move on. Witness, you moved the body and delivered the letter. Did you mean to leave the forest afterwards? Y yes I did, but... While flying over the crossroads, I saw Scootaloo crash into the other royal order. After she left, I moved the scooter and wagon to further shift the blame. <gasps> but why, though? Why go so far to pin the blame on Scootaloo? That's true. I... Why would you do that? To be honest, Sugar Stamp, even after everything you told us, I still find it hard to believe that you'd go that far. I mean, I thought you loved kids. I don't think you'd do something like that to any pony, let alone Scootaloo. That's true. It... it doesn't matter what you think. I did it, and I confessed, and that's that. Then, why did you decide to move the body and scooter to the castle rooms in the first place? It was because of what I saw before I met with Royal Order. The children talking. The blackmail deal. Oh, no that. No Turning Page and his friend had been at the castle ruins. I knew I could pin the murder on them and make the ruins look like the real murder scene. It's what Royal Order deserved after what he did to me. But, Defense, while I appreciate your habit of needling into every single minor point in each testimony, my patience is beginning to wear thin. Besides, the witness has already provided a reason for what she did to get back at Royal Order for choosing to clone himself instead of being with her. As disconcerting as that may sound, that is the motive we have been given. Unless you can offer something to refute or change it, I suggest you move on. <sighs> Fine. I just have one more question, Sugar Stamp. What is it? After you'd moved the scooter and wagon to the castle ruins, you must have flown back towards the forest entrance, passing over the crossroads along the way. But the other royal order wasn't there, right? No, he wasn't. I went to look for him, and that was when I saw what happened at the statue. When she saw Sweetie about her royal order, supposedly. <sighs> that still bothers me. But unless I can prove that that isn't what she saw, this won't get me anywhere. And Luna knows it. Let's return to the witness testimony. Okay. As for what I did at the castle before I saw the crash, I removed the letter opener and put it in my bag. Then I went to deliver the letter. <gasps> oh. Miss Sugarstamp, you're saying that you removed the letter opener, the one that had been stemming the blood flow from the victim's wound, from the body and placed it in your bag? 
And you did this before you delivered the letter? Y yes what, Why? Is there something wrong? You bet there's something wrong with that statement. It's a clear contradiction. A c contradiction? <sighs> On what grounds, defense? The witness clearly described her actions that night. She killed Royal Order, disposed of his armor, and moved the body, letter opener and all, to the castle. All to pin the crime on Turning Page and Scootaloo. Afterwards, she flew back to Sakura's hut in order to deliver that letter. I see no contradictions in her movements. It's not her movements that are contradictory. It's the letter that was in her bag. Or more accurately, the envelope. What about it? Sugar Stamp said she placed the letter opener in her bag after she'd moved the body, and that after doing so, she went to deliver the letter. If that's the case, we can reasonably assume that the letter, or rather the envelope containing it, was also in her bag. But if that's the case, then we'd expect to see something else. After all, look at the inside of the bag. It's coated in blood from the weapon. Yet, when we look at the envelope, there's not a single trace of blood. Oh my god, that's right! Objection! Huh? If that's the contradiction defense, color me not impressed in the slightest. The witness could have simply gotten the time she delivered the letter mixed up. Y yes that's it! I must have delivered the letter before I took out the letter opener from the body! So before I arrived at the castle ruins! <laughs> Sorry, but that just isn't possible! What? Explain, Defense! Do you remember what we uncovered yesterday regarding when the letter was delivered? First, the fact that we found this letter in the first place tells us that Sakura hadn't yet retrieved it. According to a friend of hers, Sakura would have collected her mail from earlier that day as soon as it was delivered. This tells us that on the day of the murder, this letter wasn't in the mailbox. If it was, Sakura would have collected it when she returned to her hut that night. Then when, pray tell, was it delivered? That leads me to my second point, Prosecutor Luna. When we found this letter yesterday, we also found the mail that had been delivered that morning. That mail was in far better condition than this letter. So this letter must have been delivered before yesterday's mail and gotten dirty as a result. Knowing that, and knowing that it hadn't been in the mailbox when Zakora returned to her hut, we can conclude that this letter arrived on the dirt of the murder itself. Oh yeah, she did say that. Hmm. Why, yes, I actually do recall that. Are you surprised or something? It was established that the letter could only have arrived that night and not any time prior, wasn't it? Right. But if you'll also recall, Zakora testified that she waited for Scootaloo and Turning Page to return for about half an hour, from 9.45 to 10.10 p.m. By 10.15, she had returned to her hut and was just about to turn in. She heard a clanging sound, so she went out to investigate. Furthermore, we also learned yesterday that Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon also heard a clanging sound at the exact same time, 10.15. Oh. 10.15 was when Sugar Stamp killed Royal Order. She said she did so by kicking him hard in the side to stagger him, then stabbing him in the head. Her kicking him made a loud metallic sound, which was most likely the claim that Zakora, Diamond Tiara, and Silver Spoon heard. <coughs> Therefore... The murder occurred right before Zakora left her hut, meaning that the letter could only have been delivered after she left, not before. Thus, the letter would have been in the bag with a bloody letter opener, rendering the idea that the envelope got no traces of blood on it impossible. Oh, wow. Indeed. But then, why does no blood exist on the envelope? Defense! You don't mean to say... I do, Prosecutor Luna. Your Honor, we agree that it's impossible for there to be no blood on this envelope, correct? Yes, I find it a perplexing situation. True. 
and one that we can solve if we just consider one other possibility. At the time that the letter was in the bag, the letter opener did not have any blood on it at any point. It didn't have any blood on it? But how can that be? Because of one simple fact. The letter opener was not used to kill Royal Order. <laughs> it's just a fabricated piece of evidence used to support Sugar Stan's story. Wow. What? And if that's the case, then Sugar Stan's confession about her killing Royal Order and pinning the blame on the kids. Exactly. Her confession is a complete and utter fabrication in and of itself. Oh, man. Oh, order! Order in the court! Miss Sykes, this is astounding. You mean to say that this witness has been lying to the court this whole time? I am, Your Honor. Objection! Huh? Defense, that is absolutely preposterous of you to claim. Need I remind you that the blood found on the letter opener matched royal orders? It could only have gotten there when the witness stabbed him with it. Objection! That doesn't explain why the envelope has no blood on it. So long as that contradiction exists, we cannot accept the letter opener was the murder weapon. Uh, I'm inclined to agree, Prosecutor Luna. The when is not as important as the why here. Then perhaps we need to clarify both questions. Huh? What? What do you mean? Your Honor, I believe now would be a good time for us to re-summon the lead detective, Private Eye, to the stand. He should be able to clarify once and for all these details surrounding the letter opener and the blood found on it. Yes, that would make sense. Very well. Let Private Eye back onto the witness stand, please. He looks nervous, as expected. Forgive me, my lord, but for what reason have I been summoned? Prosecutor Luna has requested that you provide testimony. Uh, she has? Uh, about what? We would like you to testify regarding the forensics surrounding the murder weapon, the letter opener. The Golden Pixie has suggested that it cannot be the murder weapon. You are to demonstrate why it must be, Detective. I... I see. Very well. If it would please the court. Witness testimony. The letter opener. Truthfully, it's a rather open and shut matter. The blood found on the letter opener belonged to the victim, meaning it must be the murder weapon. More than that, though, if you take a look at the head wound, you'll find that it matches the shape of the litter opener. The helmet was found at the river's mouth from the bottom bog. It has a hole matching the size of the weapon, further supporting Miss Sugarstam's testimony. If it's all a lie, then the blood, wound, and helmet would all have to be some sort of fabrication. Golden Pixie? The facts are irrefutable. No matter how you look at it, that letter opener is the murder weapon, meaning Sugar Stamp is the true killer. I'm not so sure about that, Prosecutor Luna. We've already established her testimony is suspect at best. Wouldn't it be wrong of us to assume all the supposed facts are irrefutable? Oh? So you still intend to go down this route? I do. I see. Thank you for your testimony, Detective. Defense, you may begin your cross-examination. Both the hole in the helmet and the wound match the letter opener, and the blood matches the victim's. So, if the letter opener is fake evidence, how would all of that be possible? There's only one thing I can think of. Cross-examination. This should be good. Truthfully, it's a rather open and shut matter. The blood found on the letter opener belonged to the victim, meaning it must
must be the murder weapon. <gasps> How do we know for certain the blood belonged to the victim? Because, Miss Sykes, several ponies tested it individually. There's no doubting the same consensus being reached by so many. Uh, uh yeah, I guess. So. Yeah, there is that. Surely you knew this already, Golden Pixie. Why are you insisting on this useless prattling? It's not useless. It's the tried and true method of the right anything agency. <clears throat> Private Eye, the blood may match the victims, but that alone isn't enough to prove that the letter opener is the murder weapon. I would agree with that, Miss Sykes. Which is why. More than that, though. If you take a look at the head wound, you'll find that it matches the shape of the litter opener. So you're saying that the wound shape matches that of the letter openers? How can you be so certain? After we found the litter opener in Miss Sugarstamp's bag in Cantalot, along with the blood, we conducted two tests. The first was the blood test, which came back positive for royal order. The second involved examining the wound itself to look for any notable characteristics which might match a certain weapon. And what were some of those notable characteristics? One was the presence of track marks found in the victim's head. Track marks? Huh? Yes. These are the marks that a stabbing weapon, such as a knife, might leave when it is thrust into a body. If the weapon has a distinct styling to it, it'll leave trace impressions. Within the wound, we managed to find several impressions that match those found on the letter opener in Miss Sugarstamp's bag. Along with that, on the outside of the wound, we did not find a hilt impression. The letter opener does not have a hilt, so that is another match. Though not quite as substantial as the previous one, admittedly. <laughs> I, oh. I guess that would be pretty indicative of it being the weapon. So that proves the body was actually stabbed with the letter opener. No use trying to debunk that. The question is, when did that happen? Let's continue. Detective, what else supports Sugar Stamp's confession? The helmet was found at the river's mouth of Froggy Bottom Bog. It has a hole matching the size of the weapon, further supporting Miss Sugarstamp's testimony. But only the helmet itself was found, right? That's correct. But not the armor. Wouldn't the armor be a stronger contender for supporting her testimony? It would. But as I understand it, Miss Sugarstamp testified that she disposed of the entire armor set in the river. Given that we found the helmet at the mouth of the river, it seems logical to assume the rest flowed out into the bog and sank. Which would support Sugar's testimony, but at the same time, it conveniently removes the need to prove definitively that the rest of the armor was there at all, doesn't it? Ah. The helmet was there, which matches Sugar Stamp's testimony, suggesting it's the truth. And if it isn't, if it's all a lie, then the blood, wound, and health would all have to be some sort of fabrication. Some sort of fabrication, you say? I assume you don't mean that the helmet would have to be fake. No. That would be a bit much. I suppose I mean that some other aspect of it would have to be fabricated, if not the helmet itself. Some other aspect? Like, say, where it was found? Or perhaps more specifically, how it was brought to where it was found? What? I suppose that could be one way, yes. So you admit it could be a possibility, Detective. Instead of getting there by river, that helmet could have been carried to the scene and placed there? No, that's quite impossible, Miss Sykes. Oh? And why would that be? The bog itself, where the helmet was found, was not considered relevant until the end of the previous trial. It was sealed off once that was determined. For Sempony to have brought it there for us to find. 
they would have had to bypass that seal. An impossibility, I'm afraid. Is that right? Private Eye, could you amend your testimony and add what you just said? Certainly, Miss Sykes. No one knew the Vaughn was related to the crime scene until the previous trial, after which it was sealed off. No pony could have entered to plant the helmet. Huh? Private Eye? I'm sorry to say that you're completely wrong about that last statement. How so? Is that so? It's true that the bug was sealed off at the end of the previous trial, but it's not true that no pony could have gotten in. One pony in particular would have had access to the scene. Who? And by having access, they would have had the chance to bring the helmet there to plant it, all in order to support Sugar Stamp's testimony. <laughs> you don't mean... Miss Sykes, who could this pony be? There's only one answer, Your Honor. It's the pony who ordered that the bug be sealed off in the first place. Say what now? <laughs> what? Is this for real? Ask this. 
Where would Private Eye have to go in order to get the blood sample of a deceased murder victim? <gasps> Probably wherever the body had been autopsied. And where would that be, Prosecutor Luna? Cantermont. Exactly. Oh. The Royal Order was a member of the Royal Guard, after all. So Canterlot was where he was undergoing an autopsy. And Canterlot was also where Private Eye and his team apprehended Sugarstan, as well as where they discovered the bloody letter opener. If he had the helmet with him while in Canterlot and got hold of a letter opener before arresting Sugarstan, then it would have been possible for him to put the helmet on the body and stab it with the letter opener, leaving the hole in the helmet and a bloody weapon as proof that she'd killed Royal Order. And that's why the scene was sealed off until Private Eye returned from Canterlot. <coughs> it was so he had all the time he needed to fabricate evidence to support Sugar Stamp's story. Objection. Wow. Very elaborate, Golden Pixie. So you say that the entirety of Sugar Stamp's story is a complete lie. One that our dear detective helped to create? I am, Prosecutor Luna. Then what of the piano? Doesn't that support the fact that Miss Stamp really did meet with Royal Order that night? Well, that's what we've been thinking at least. But something about that planner has been bugging me. And what is that? Your Honor, the defense has just proven that the legitimacy of two pieces of evidence, the helmet and the letter opener, have to be called into question. In large part, that is because of their association with Private Eye. This planner also shares that characteristic. It, it does. Miss Sykes, you mean to say... But that would mean... Writing in the journal matches Royal Logs. I checked and double checked that one personally. Oh. Your Honor, this planner did not undergo testing by an entire forensic team. Instead, it has been tested by only one pony Private Eye himself. Mind blown. Your Honor. At this time, I do not think we can trust this witness's words as to the legitimacy of all the pieces of evidence he's handled. As such, the defense requests that the planner be retested immediately, and the form writing inside be compared to that of both Royal Order and Private Eye. I agree. That is definitely the best course of action. Prosecutor Luna, do you have any objections? Prosecutor Luna? Wh what? I mean... Well? The prosecution has no objections to the defense's request, Your Honor. Very well. Bailiff, see to it that the planner be retested. Well then, Prosecutor Luna, have the planner and horn writing been tested? They have, Your Honor. And? What are the results? The horn writing in the planner? Does not match that of royal order, but rather that of private eye. Oh man. There you have it, your honor. Definitive proof that not only did private eye tamper with the facts of this case, but also that Sugar Stamp's story cannot be taken as the truth. Yes. What do you have to say for yourself? Well, now, that is... Uh, well... Huh? <gasps> what? Thank you, devotion. You are as persistent now as you were yesterday, Miss Sykes. It's almost admirable. What uh, are you doing? What's with her all of a sudden? She seems... older. Your Honor, I think I can explain, at the very least, why Sugar Stamp's story has so many problems with it. You can? What? Aha! Uh -huh. The defense has just proven that it's all a lie! It's not a lie, Your Honor. But... I do believe that it's a story affected by all the events of that night. Uh, affected by...
point. I'm sure I don't have to point out that seeing the murder was a traumatic experience for all of those involved. Sugar Stamp may not be able to remember all of the details clearly, such as the actual weapon she used to commit the crime. It's true that my memory of that night is a little fuzzy, but I remember one thing for certain. I killed Royal Warner. I know I did. Yes, I suppose that it is reasonable to assume some degree of memory loss occurred. I can also explain the detective's actions, though he'd need to see if I am correct. Huh? Private Eye must have known of Sugar's guilt, but aside from her confession, he did not have the right amount of evidence to support it. With no way to prove her guilt, he decided he would have to take matters into his own hooves. And that's why... I see. My lord. Yes, detective? It pains me to have to admit this, but what Miss Devotion has just postulated was indeed my thought process. What? So you're saying... It, you're really saying... What? Uh. It's true. Every word. I confess. I planted the helmet and fabricated the weapon, as the defense stated. This was done for two reasons. To bring justice to royal order, and to prove the guilt of the true killer, Sugar Stamp. What? Uh, this is I, uh, a rather unprecedented series of events, I must admit. I agree. But where does it leave us? Your Honor, it, it leaves us nowhere, Defense. Huh? What? What do you mean? All this while, you've been focusing your efforts on trying to disprove Sugar Stamp's confession. What we've just heard from both Fair Devotion and Private Eye, however, discounts your entire premise. We're back where we started. But... More than that, though, we've gone off on a completely separate tangent thanks to your antics. Need I remind you what this trial is about? Uh, this trial. Oh. Sugar Stamp right. may have indeed confessed to killing Royal Order, but we are not here to determine her guilt on the matter. Today we are here to determine the guilt of Miss Sweetie Bell in regards to her own crime. You should attempt to focus on that and not this other matter. <coughs> Prosecutor Luna raises a fair point. This trial is about the alleged murder of Royal Order by Miss Sweetie Bell. And as such, we must focus on that case before diving into another. Uh, no. I know Sugar Stamp's confession is a complete sham. And I know that her previous testimony can't be trusted, especially if it's reliant on her phony confession. But, but how can I demonstrate that definitively if their devotion and private eye have now testified in support of what she said? Defense? I yes, Prosecutor Luna? You appear to be at a loss. Is it really that obvious? Uh. Perhaps you and the court would benefit from a quick refresher. Proceed, Prosecutor Luna. Thus far, we have heard testimony from two witnesses, Sir Devotion and Sugar Stamp. They claim to have witnessed the defendant accidentally kill Royal Order at the statue. We have also heard the reason why there were two Royal Orders that night. It was because of the affair he was having with Sugar Stamp. Earlier, the defense postulated that this affair may have been part of why Fair Devotion decided to venture into the Everfree Forest after her husband. That matter has not been settled, however, due to the defense attacking Sugar Stamp's confession and questioning its legitimacy. For us to get back on track, then, we should focus on these witnesses' initial testimonies once more. And perhaps more specifically, we should focus on Miss Fair Devotion's testimony. Does that sound reasonable, Defense? Oh, I see where this is going. Hmm? Sure, 
apparently the defense is about to name me a suspect because of this affair, and discredit my testimony all to save her own client. Is she? Uh... It's not just Luna anymore. Now Fair is trying to guide me as well. But to have me name her a suspect... Why? Twilight, do you have any idea what we should do? Well, I mean... It seems like we need to hear more testimony in order to back up our claim again. But we can't hear from Sugar Stamp since she'll just double down on her confession. And Private Eyes already confessed to planting evidence to support her confession because he believes it to be true. In other words, further testimony about what Sugar Stamp supposedly did wouldn't help us. The witnesses or the prosecution could easily back up her confession. Right. So... Maybe if we heard testimony about something else that happened that night? From some pony else? Something from some pony else? Yeah, and if I understand what Princess Luna's trying to do, she'd want us to hear from Fair Devotion. Right. What's wrong with Nina? I mean, it does make the most amount of sense, doesn't it? It does, but... I'm still not sure that's the right step to take. There's still something off about fair devotion. I can't place my finger on it, but it's enough to make me hesitant to follow Luna's suggestion. Well, what else can we do? This seems like the only course of action we have left. And Princess Luna's trying to grant us as many chances as she can to help Sweetie Belle. Sweetie Belle? She's the key to all of this, I'm sure of it. More than fair devotion or sugar stamp. I need to find a way to get her to speak up. Right. Her right to remain the silent. Answer. Will you hear additional testimony from Miss Fair Devotion? Before I answer that, Your Honor, I'd like to ask the defendant something. Huh? Miss Sykes. Very well, defense. You may. Sweetie Belle. After everything we've just heard, is there anything you would like to add? Anything that comes to mind? Sweetie? Uh, still relying on your right to remain silent, I see. Very well then. Your Honor, the defense is ready to declare its next course of action. You are? Then that means you'd like to hear more testimony from Fair Devotion? I suppose that the defense really requires more from me. No, Your Honor, we won't. What? Wait, what? Y you don't? What game are you playing now, defense? Oh, I'm done <laughs> playing games, Luna. Yours, theirs, sweeties. It doesn't matter anymore. I'll force the truth out, no matter what I have to do. No more secrets. It's time we finally heard sweetie's side of the story. And if she won't cooperate willingly, I'll beat her. Your Honor, at this point, the defense... would like to step down from defending Sweetie Belle. What? Are you serious? Oh my god, are you serious? Prosecutor Luna, believe me, and 
I can assure you that this is the only way for us to find the truth. The real truth. But abandoning her... If Sweetie Belle is willing to testify, then I'll remain as her defense. But I can't help some pony who won't even help themselves. Hmm. This sucks. Please, Prosecutor Luna. I know this seems reckless of me, but I can assure you, I know what I'm doing. I know this is the way forward. The only way. Please? Trust me. I... I will try, Miss Sykes. <coughs> Even you, Princess Luna? I am sorry, little one. But she raises a fair point. And it appears you must make a decision. Either you testify, or the defense formally steps down, and the prosecution does its duty. I know what this looks like, but we have to hear from Sweetie Belle somehow. This... This was the only way I could think of. Guess there's no other yes. choice. You're right. We have to hear from her. Does that mean... Princess Twilight? Your Honor, the co-counsel for the defense agrees with this decision. As such, unless Sweetie Belle chooses to testify, the defense will step down. No. Please, no. Hmm. This is all rather unconventional. These are unconventional times, Your Honor. And sometimes they call for unconventional methods. It's true. So they do. Very well. The court accepts the defense's decision to step down. <laughs> Huh? Fine. I'll do it. Sweetie? I'll testify. Oh. Miss Sykes, I take it this means you will continue on as the defendant's lawyer? I will, Your Honor. Duly noted. Now, Prosecutor Luna, do you have any objections to hearing the defendant testify? I do not, Your Honor. Good. In which case, I call for a 20-minute recess to allow all parties to prepare themselves. When we reconvene, we will hear Sweetie Belle's testimony. I hope you don't regret it. Court is adjourned. Right. <laughs> to be continued. Voices. Phoenix Wright, Julius Gem, Stephen Wright, Athena Sykes and Widget, Ed Oxographist, Apollo Justice, Web Shoulder, Trucy Wright, Kaylin VO, Sweetie Belle, Twilight Sparkle, MLP Arts. Voices. Private Eye, Pretzelman 718, Joe Cheney, The Judge, The Willstonator, Thespio, Fair Devotion, Sugar Stamp, Overgrowth, Katie Randolph, Princess Luna, Goddess Level 1, Bailiff, The Al Javis, AJ Davis. Audio Engineers, The Sound Man, Levi Francis, Team Leader, Joel, Mr. Gentleman's, Be Benjamin Dale, SKVA, Sneha Kumar, Pink Escapade, Riders, Destro, VA, Caleb Del Rosario, Team Leader, Serenity, Everett Toes, JM Boot, James Boot, Jarvie Jared, Jared Berberabe, Berberabe, Andrethist, Andrew Church.
background artists, courtroom panorama, Silver Feathers, Shannon Evans, team leader, judge's chair, V-chart 920, defendant lobby, cadet red shirt, courtroom overview, the Al Javis, AJ Davis, co-counsel view, Beppy. Video editors, Brunoski Inc., Bruno Bermado, team leader, Doc Naguyan, Henry Naguyan, Ghost, Michael M., Tragic Wonder, Elliot L., The Joker, Kevin Randolph, Jacob M., Jacob Majewski, 123 Con Honor Poop, Connor Rolfs. MLPMV guy, Jabril Slade, team leader, animation riggers. Silver Feathers, Shannon Evans, Cinder Clouds, Doc Naguyan, Henry Naguyan, Eon 333, Lucas Fermanek, Pink Escapade, Pretty Pegasus Wings. Music, Ace Attorney, Spirit of Justice, Defendant, Lobby, Prelude, The Truth. Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies, Proof of Friendship. Professor Lane vs. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Rainy Night. Ace Attorney, Justice for All, Court Begins, 2002. Elements of Justice, Basics of the Case. Professor Lane vs. Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Fiery Witnesses. Ace Attorney, Dual Destinies, Cross-Examination, Moderado, 2013. Logic Trinity, Ace Attorney Anime, Opening Statement, Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, Courtroom Revolutionaire, 2016, Ace Attorney Dual Destinies, Pursuit, Keep Pressing On, Variation, Cross-Examination, Allegro, 2013, Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, Confess the Truth, Elements of Justice, Fair Devotion, A Life of Melancholy, Ace Professor Lane vs. Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney, Logic and Witchcraft, The Great Ace Attorney Adventures, Complications and the Proceedings, Ace Attorney Tool Destinies, Jingle, You Should Rest at a Time Like This. Apps Used Adobe Animate, Adobe Audition, Adobe After Effects, Adobe Photoshop, Vegas Pro 17, Autodesk 3DS Max, Toon Boom Harmony Premium, Clip Studio Paint EX, Paint Tool Site 2, GIMP 10.2, Audacity, Plural Eyes, Melodyne, FL Studio 20, Swivel. Flashback Profile Art, The Al Javis, AJ Davis, Graphics, YD Gion, De Gion Yun, The Sound Man, Levi Francis. Ace Attorney Models, 3D Models, Ace Attorney Spirit of Justice, Retexturing, Shannon Evans and AJ Davis, Trucy Wright, The Al Javis, AJ Davis, Athena Sykes, Silver Feathers, Shannon Evans, Phoenix Wright, Apollo Justice, The Judge, Automation Pipeline, 123 Connor Poop, Connor Rolfs, The Sound Man, Levi Francis, Pretzelman 718, Joe Cheney. MLP Rigs, Mare Pony Base, Tired Brony, Stallion Pony Base, Minty Root, Twilight Sparkle, MLPMV Guy, Jabril Slade, H3CRM, Rodrigo Consolin Massage, Silver Feathers, Shannon Evans, Sweetie Bell, Silver Feathers, H3CRM, Cinder Clouds, Private Eye, H3CRM, Doc Naguyan, Silver Feathers, Fair Devotion, MLPMV Guy, H3RCM, Silver Feathers, Sugar Stamp, Pretty Pegasus Wings, Silver Cinder Clouds, Princess Luna, H3RCM, MLPMV Guy, Minty Root. Managers, The Sound Man, Levi Francis, Head of Production, Destro VA, Caleb Del Rosario, Head of Pre-Production, 
Ending credits theme, Message, original song by Ray Yasuda, performed by Shannon Evans and Katie Randolph, translators by Kanono, Jane Red, Nami and Triff, instrumental cover by Brian Brian, video and art by Dae Jeon Yun and AJ Davis and Levi Francis. Director, Editor, Writer, The Al Javis, A.J. Davis, Assistant Director, Mr. Gentleman's Benjamin Dale. This fan-made sequel is based on Neo Artemis' original series Turnabout Storm. My Little Pony Friendship is Magic and Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney are owned and copyrighted by Hasbro and Capcom respectively. This is a non-profit project that takes no ownership of their characters or soundtracks in this movie. Special thanks to Pretty Pegasus Wings, Connor, Brunowski, Capcom, Hasbro, Neo Artemis, and you for watching. Alright, so that was the second part of the second trial. And Boy, things sure have gone a lot more complicated than the last trial. But now that Sweetie Belle is willing to testify, we'll just have to wait and see what she has to say about what she did that night. And hopefully it will give us some clues as to what really happened. So yeah, here's hoping for what's to come. Anyway, thank y'all for watching and I'll see you all next time.